Hi, this is Tiger Shark Nilsson, and you're watching What's My Rig. I was asked by Ryan to uh, talk a little about my guitar rig, so uh, here it goes. Starting off with guitars. Here's my Fender Johnny Marr Jag. Uh, Johnny Marr, famous for his work with the Smiths, among else. I'm a big fan, so of course I had to get this guitar. Um, works great for surf music, in my opinion. Uh, we've got a great whammy bar, a pickup selector with many options, uh, and some high pass filters and stuff. Great guitar, hands down. I like it a lot. Uh, I've got some other guitars as well. Uh, I'm not gonna show, show all of them, but uh, here's uh, my Squire from 1998, my first electric guitar uh, ever. Uh, I asked uh, Guitar Geeks uh, here in Stockholm to uh, do some modifications on it, uh, and they were like, are you sure? Uh, because this would cost a lot. Um, but I was like, yeah, yeah, I like this guitar, but it needs upgrades. Uh, so we changed the pickups to uh, Lundgren 60s set. Lundgren is a Swedish pickup maker, makes great stuff. Uh, also changed the uh, bridge to uh, a Callahan bridge. Expensive, but super great. Uh, some new uh, tuners as well, and a refret. We got new frets uh, and a kill switch here. Uh, so if you push this, the guitar goes dead quiet. So you can do some Tom Morello stuff if you'd like. Uh, but now I, I really enjoy this guitar uh, and I've used it quite a bit with Tiger Shark Nielsen as a rhythm guitar mainly. Uh, so that's the guitars. Let's move on to the amps. So, here are the amps, PV Wiggy, the Dweezil Zappa signature amp. Uh, I'm a massive Dweezil Zappa fan, so of course I needed to have one of these. We've got the Roland Jazz Chorus 22, uh, the smallest version, I think, of the JC series, the classic JC 120. Uh, Fender Princeton Solid State Amp, and the... Fender Michael Landau Hot Rod DeVille, a tube amp, which is uh, very nice. Uh, but I don't use these amps with Tiger Shark Nielsen because I'm into silent recording and these arm amps aren't silent. So instead, I use my pedal board as a platform for the sounds that I create. All right, so here it is. As you can see, it's uh, extremely big, a bit freaky, maybe, um, but uh, we'll get through it. Uh, I'm starting with this uh, line box from Reaper Effects in Sweden, and then it goes to a Dunlop uh, volume pedal. From there on, the jam pedals wacko wah. Uh, with the uh, seagull switch for the crazy seagull sound. Uh, then it goes into the Monster K Fuzz from Black Cat. And this is a take on um, the classic Fuzz Tone by uh, K. Uh, if you listen to uh, Elevation by U2, you can hear the effect. It's like a combination of uh, Fuzz and uh, Wah, maybe. After that, we'll go into this switcher from Lele, uh, three amp selector, so A, B and T, uh, one amp for each of them. Uh, line B is only this pedal, the Digitech, Digitech Jimi Hendrix pedal, multi-effect. For me, as a Jimi Hendrix uh, fan, this is a must. Uh, and the other chain, chain T, it goes into this multi-effect pedals from Korg, uh, old 90s stuff. But I think uh, 
their sound is quite nice if you use it right. Uh, I don't use these pe uh, pedals with Tiger Shark Nelson, however. Um, so the next in chain, the, the long, big chain, it goes from A to Monterey by Keeley. Another uh, Jimi Hendrix pedal. Uh, it got fuzz. It got uh, uh, an octave effect, rotary, vibe, and uh, wah. Uh, so it's a versatile pedal. Uh, don't use it with Tiger Shark Nilsson, however. Uh, from there on, we'll go to uh, the Analog Man Beano Boost Mini. It's a treble boost pedal. I think you're one of the best on the market. Uh, moving on to the Snow White Autowa from Mad Professor. An Autowa uh, designed by Björn Juhl, uh, the legendary Swedish uh, effect maker. Uh, from that on, I think we land in between here. It's a little buffer by Lele. You can watch it here. The Lele Sunday Driver. And from the Lele Sunday Driver, I think we'll go to the Benjamin Myriad Fuss. Uh, the Josh Smith uh, signature pedal. Great fuss. Uh, and from there on to um, the Pitch Black Tuner by Korg. I think it's a decent tuner. And Freak Out by uh, Digitech. It's a uh, feedback creator. So whenever I push this switch, it creates feedback. Pretty, pretty natural. From there on to the Whammy. It's the Whammy DT. Um, octave up, octave down. And you can make it sound in other earning intervals. Yeah, classic pedal. If you're into uh, Rachel's machine, you probably heard it a lot. Uh, from there, we go to the MXR Face 95. Uh, a phaser pedal where you can choose if you want it to sound like the Face 90 or the Face 45 pedal. From there on, into the Exotic Effects EP Booster. Uh, it's like a preamp, uh, I would say. And then we've got the Kali 76 Stacked Edition from Origin Effects. Uh, this is a compressor I use a lot with uh, Tiger Shark Nelson. You can see this golden, uh, the golden knob, uh, which. Uh, decides how much of the compression and how much of the uh, natural tone should go through. And it's, it's actually two compressors in one. That's why they call it the stacked edition. Great, great stuff. Moving on to another compressor, the Jangle Box. Uh, works well with 12 string guitar, like the birds and that stuff. Classic uh, Jangle stuff. And where do we go now? We go to uh, the Duke of... No, we go to the Cornerstone, Antique, which is a very advanced tube screever pedal. Um, I think it could be inspired by Steve Ray Vaughan. Then we got the Duke of Tone by MXR, uh, which is based on the Analog Man, King of Tone. Uh, and I think it's, it's a really great overdrive. Uh, pushes other overdrives very good. It sounds nice on its own. Uh, the, the hype of this pedal is real. Very good. Then we got the One Control Baby Blue. Another pedal designed by Björn Juhl. Uh, it's an overdrive a bit like a fuss, I would say. 
uh, somewhere in between. We've got the Sputnik from Space Man Effects, another uh, pretty crazy fuss. Then we've got the Tube Screeber Mini from Ivanes, uh, the Tube Screeber classic pedal. I use it to push other overdrives a bit uh, when you need uh, more mid. The Tube Screamer is great. Another great pedal, uh, Tumnus from Wampler. Uh, their take on the legendary Klon pedal. And I use this as a tone shaper. Um, you see the gain is rolled way down. So just to, uh, to shape the tone of other overdrives. Then we got the Honeybee OD. And this is the high gain version. Also Björn Juhl uh, design pedal, uh, now uh, in a one control envelope. After that, next Björn Juhl uh, stuff, the Granith Grey Booster, one control also. Then the legendary Timmy pedal, uh, built by Paul Cochrane. Uh, very transparent overdrive. Uh, I like the, the base cut uh, on this one, uh, very nice control. Moving on, here's the Goo by Tone Concepts. Distortion pedal, uh, it's uh, Nels Klein's uh, signature pedal, I, I will say. Uh, based off the Marshall Governor. Uh, I think they made 250 pieces of this, uh, so uh, it's pretty rare pedal. Uh, distortion, uh, not something that I use with Tiger Shark Nielsen. We've got the ODRC by Nordland, uh, and this is a take on the, uh, the Nobles ODR1, uh, the uh, classic pedal which is used a lot in uh, Nashville, I'm told. This uh, pedal is built by the original um, uh, designer of the ODR, uh, the Nobles of Europe. But this is his own pedal, and it, this has uh, great stuff like the low cut filter, because the Nobles ODR one is very, very bassy. And uh, to uh, cut that, we get this little knob right here. Uh, moving on, The Wizard by Olson Amps here in Sweden. Uh, I use this for uh, pretty high gain stuff. Very cool pedal. We've got the Gladio by Cornerstone, an Italian company. Uh, and I think this should emulate uh, the tone of uh, Eric Johnson. You've got two channels. One and two. Uh, two is more, more heavy overdrive, and this is a lighter overdrive, I would say. Uh, I used uh, the first channel on uh, the Tiger Shark Nielsen song uh, Killer Whale. I needed uh, more, more uh, overdrive than I usually do when I recorded that song. So uh, this is my choice for that song. The Revival Drive by Origin Effects. Uh, amp in a box. Uh, uh, I think it's based on a Marshall amp. Uh, you can get great sounds out of this pedal. Then we got the next distortion pedal, the Raptor by Tommy Folkeson. Tommy Folkeson is uh, a legend here in Sweden. Uh, he's often modding Marshall uh, amps. Uh, and this is his take on a, uh, on a Marshall amp, and it's, it's really high gain. Van Halen stuff, and that works great with this one. The OCD by Fal Faltone, uh, pretty well known, uh, nice overdrive. The Lightspeed by Greer Ramps, I use this pedal a lot with uh, Tiger Shark Nielsen. Just a little light overdrive that makes the sound come alive. Uh, one of the 
best uh, low overdrive pedals I've heard. And then there's the last overdrive uh, distortion fuzz pedal and it's the Turbo Rat by Proco. Uh, also a classic pedal, the Rat pedals. Uh, pretty gritty if you like it too. Uh, then we'll go into modulation. First of all the uh, flanger, the Aurora flanger by Spaceman Effects. Uh, lots of knobs um, but it can sound great if you just turn them as uh, they should be and uh, then we got the SI1 by Boss a synthesizer uh, emulator we got different different types of uh, emulations I like the organ emulations a lot I've used that for recordings uh, to fake an organ sounds uh, pretty authentic. The chorus CE2, classic chorus from Boss, um, one of the most classic chorus pedals of all time. Then we got a phaser pedal from Digitech, the hardwire wire stereo phaser, a very versatile phaser. VB2 from Boss which is a vibrato pedal. I use it uh, in the unlatch mode uh, for very extreme uh, vibratos. MXR Univibe, great vibe pedal, uh, easy to use, sounds good. BF2 flanger by Boss, another flanger. Um, I think this works very well in the pop context. Uh, and we got the TR2 from Boss, uh, a tremolo pedal. I use this in a pretty extreme uh, setting, uh, something that might Tomorello would uh, dial in, I think. And moving on, we've got the small clone, the classic uh, pedal from EHX. Instant Kurt Cobain sound, uh, come as you are. Uh, comes to mind. Uh, yeah, nice sound. Then we go to V Jukes and Kettner Tube Rotosphere, uh, a rotor pedal. Uh, I think it's the best I ever heard. Uh, to be uh, to be honest. Uh, moving on, Catalin Bread Zero Point uh, Flanger. Uh, another type of flanger. It's just on and off on this and you got this switch to make it go to the zero point. Uh, pretty cool, but you need overdrive in front of it to make it sound really good. Then we're heading to the delay section. Here's the DD3 by Boss. Classic, easy to use delay, always sounds good. Uh, yeah, great, uh, great delay. The next delay, the Robinek by uh, DOD. Uh, it's uh, got some crazy stuff which you can do. Uh, the Robinek effect, um, and there's some uh, oscillation effects also. Sounds good, uh, easy to use. The next delay is V. Belle Epoque Deluxe from Catalin Bread uh, and it got the uh, preamp from the Belle Epoque uh, the EP, EP3 uh, and uh, also the Echo of course uh, I think this sounds great also makes the sound come alive I used this on uh, Sunset uh, to make the sound uh, get bigger, yeah. The next pedal I used for Sunset is the Obscura Alter Delay by Digitech. Uh, I use this as a backward delay. Uh, so what you play comes out backwards from the pedal. Very cool, but it can do a lot of stuff. Uh, 
Then we got V Canyon from EHX. Another delay pedal with a lot of uh, different options. Uh, yeah. Nice, nice stuff. V Feedbacker Booster from Boss FB2. Uh, and this, I, I use it for, for a volume boost. Uh, you could also, if you just press this and hold it, uh, get a bit of feedback. But I don't think this feedback is as good as uh, the one you get in, in the freak out. Uh, so that's not really I, uh, something I use. I use it more for like a solo when I, when I have a guitar solo. Uh, I engage this one. Then we freeze from EHX also, uh, and when you push this switch, it freezes the sound, so what you're playing stays, uh, like a, a piano pedal, really. Uh, cool stuff. Moving on, we've got another delay pedal, the Space Echo RE202 from Boss. Uh, the, class, the classic Space Echo, the, uh, the rack unit here in a pedal size. Very well made. Uh, I haven't used it with Tiger Shock Nilsson yet. Um, but I think I will. Uh, it's a cool sounding unit. And we've got the 30 milliseconds double tracker from Keeley. A pedal uh, which makes uh, the sound sound double tracked. Add some reverb, uh, get some different uh, options. Pretty cool. And this gigantic unit is the Korg SDD 3000 pedal. Uh, a digital delay uh, with a preamp. Uh, it uh, emulates a classic uh, rack stuff used by the Edge, if I'm correct. Um, you can do very much stuff with this pedal. Then we go into the Digitech Polara pedal, a reverb pedal uh, with many options. It's in the same series as the Obscura Delay pedal. I think these pedals are, are very well made. A lot of options that sounds great. Then we'll get to the Strymon Flint reverb. Uh, three types of reverb, 60s, 70s and 80s. Um, I use the plate reverb most, I think. Uh, there's also tremolo, three types of tremolo, and they sound good as well. Um, yeah, then we've got V. True Spring from Source Audio. Uh, it emulates a spring reverb and I think it does the job very well. Uh, I've tried uh, the Dan Electro Spring King. I've tried uh, the Ocean's Eleven by EHX and I didn't think those units produced the spring sound as I wanted it to. This is more close to uh, a true spring uh, reverb in an amp. It can never get 100% uh, of course, but I think this is about as close as you can get in the dig digital world. Um, maybe Surfy Bear Industries makes a pedal, uh, those big units, maybe better, but uh, I think this uh, does the job pretty well. It also has a nice tremolo, uh, so you can engage that as well uh, with this little switch. And I use both the tremolo and the spring reverb a lot with uh, Tiger Shock Nilsson. Um, yeah, it drips pretty well. You can use an app to uh, download sounds. I'm not really a fan of using an app uh, to download sounds to pedals, but once you've done the job, it sounds 
great. And we've got V Mimic by TC Electronic. Another double pedal. Uh, it works well in stereo. I don't think it works well in mono. So you uh, you should use it in stereo. Uh, yeah. And some buffers down here uh, from one control and from road rage to uh, to get the, the signal strong because <laughs> the signal goes through a lot of pedals here and uh, so you really need buffers uh, so it won't weaken out especially in the treble uh, it can get pretty dull otherwise and finally the Strymon Iridium uh, which is uh, an amp in a box, an amp simulator, and you get uh, three different amps, uh, the Fender, the Vox, and the Marshall, and uh, it got uh, different cabs as well on these ones. Uh, I think this is the best amp simulator I have ever tried. Uh, it sounds authentic, I think. You're like in 95, 96, 97 percent of a real true amp with this pedal. So this is what I use with Tiger Shock Nilsson, so I can record at home, uh, and I won't disturb neighbors. Uh, I can work early mornings, late nights, uh, and no one gets angry. So it's really a great unit. Made my life. So much easier, much easier than to uh, mic up an amp. Always sounds good. Uh, yeah, I definitely, definitely recommend it. So that's my rig. You can watch it here. Uh, it's of course crazy. It's not mobile. Uh, it just stands here uh, as a studio. Uh, effect board but I think it works very well whenever I need a sound I probably can do it with all of these pedals uh, yeah all right thank you for watching hope you enjoyed it thank you Ryan for inviting me uh, all the best cheers